This week's show is sponsored by Celebrate Vitamins, providing the optimum level of vitamin and mineral supplementation that's tasty and affordable. Get all of your favorite Celebrate products at CelebrateVitamins.com. This week's episode of Bariatric TV is sponsored by Bariatric Advantage, the most complete line of micronutrient replacements specifically designed for the weight loss surgery patient. Help support the show by ordering your Bariatric Advantage products directly from the BTV eStore. Hey freaks, what's up? I'm Tony. And I'm Linda. Welcome back, y'all. And what do we have on the agenda for this week? We'll start off with a drop zone freak who's the best. Bounce back. It's gonna happen. When it comes to the DS, the information is like... And a deep dish pizza for freaks. No way! Way. This week's Drop Zone Freak hails from Henrico, Virginia, and he's the first best Drop Zone Freak we've ever had. The first best Drop Zone Freak? Aren't you playing favorites a bit there, Linda? No, really! He's the first best Drop Zone Freak we've ever had, and I can prove it. All right then, prove it. This week's Drop Zone Freak is Dennis Best. Get it? First best Dennis Best. <laughs> Get it? That is some good writing there, I'm telling you. That is class A writing right there. Did you write that? Uh-huh. Stick to producing. <laughs> Dennis said he's glad he had surgery because I've gone from 410 pounds to 160 pounds with a 250 pound weight loss. I got my life back and am now making local commercials for our bariatric surgeons here in Richmond, Virginia. That's two sentences, Dennis. <laughs> Way to go, Dennis. Now don't forget to email us your address and phone number to feedback at bariatrictv.com so we can have Revival send you some tasty soy chips. Now get off your arses, freaks. Send us your before and afters as well as one sentence on why you're glad you had weight loss surgery to feedback at bariatrictv.com. You want tasty Revival chips, don't you? Now we're bouncing on over to the dumping ground. <laughs> I don't feel good. Welcome to the Dumping Ground. Bounce back. What is it? And is it avoidable? When you get really drunk and you kind of hit this wall, and then you bounce no. back, and you hit this wall, and then you bounce back. I've seen that. I've been that. We've all heard people talk about bounce back. Usually it's in response to a postie who's worried they've lost too much weight or have gained a few pounds after hitting their lowest weight. Most post-ops I know have had some bounce back. The key to keeping it in check is to not try to rationalize or justify a weight gain after surgery as, oh, it's just bounce back. Yeah, if nothing else, we are a community. That's not what it said. <laughs> well, let's just stop and we'll back up and we'll just do it again. I'm just gonna leave with you. Yeah, if nothing else, we as a community are awesome, wicked awesome at rationalizing things that make us uncomfortable. Like eating that extra snack because you were so good the day before. Or for me, it was saying that my extra 75 pounds were baby weight when my daughter was 10. Yeah, I don't think so. Most people we know who have had weight loss surgery get down to their lowest weight, then gain back a few. Most studies quote a range of about 5 to 10% of excess weight loss will be regained after about the two year mark. This regain or bounce back is usually attributed to a slowing metabolism and, in the case of an RNY patient, to the decreasing malabsorption. At about the two year mark, most patients also find they can eat more and might start slipping into old bad eating habits. Those old bad habits got me in this spell. This is where you need to determine what's normal and what you're trying to rationalize away. 5, 10, or even 15 pounds could just be bounce back and may be normal to your body. But if you find yourself continuing to gain, you need to stop and take a look at your habits. The lowest weight I got down to was about 135, and I hated the way I looked. Well, I hated the way my face looked. I loved the way those size 4s fit me. I gained back to about 145, and that's where I'm happy. So for me, a 10 pound bounce back is fine. Yeah, initially I got too skinny too. Mikey no likey, so I gained a few pounds back and was much happier. Of course now, seven years later, I've gone a bit past the bounce back threshold and have moved into some regain. 
mostly due to bad habits. I'm currently trying to drop 15 pounds to get me back to my happy weight range. I hear you, sister, me too. At six years out, I wanna drop 15 pounds as well. I guess the difference between the old Tony and the new Tony is that now I'm doing something about it. I have the tools and the knowledge to be successful. And it's so much easier to lose 15 pounds than it is to lose 150 pounds. It's really not. <laughs> I, I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> so freaks, some bounce back is normal and should be expected. Don't freak out, but don't ignore it either. Pay close attention to how the scale is moving and how your clothes are fitting. If you find yourself shooting past that 10 or 15% of bounce back weight, address it now. We want all you freaks to be successful. And to be successful, we need to, anyone, anyone, Bueller, Bueller, remain educated. Do your research before surgery and after. It's your body. The only way to remain successful is to alter your reality. Welcome to Altered Reality. Hey, Tony, tell me all you know about the duodenal switch. Okay, Mike, how about you? Tell me what you know about the DS. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. When it comes to the duodenal switch, the information out there is either lacking or in many cases can be based on old stereotypes. Until very recently, even our own forms were sadly lacking when it came to participation from those who have had experience from this form of weight loss surgery. But that all changed when we received an email from Maria C. asking to see more info on the DS. We explained to her that we would love to do more episodes on the DS, but we really didn't have many forum members who had that type of surgery. And since our episodes are mostly driven by what goes on in our forums, well, we were pretty clueless about most things DS. We had done a segment on the DS back in episode number 16. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And since then, it's been a virtual DS wasteland. It's just a DS wasteland. <laughs> Don't give me that look, Tony Tell. Tony's frowning at us over there. <laughs> Thanks to Maria C., we now have lots of DSers in our forum letting us know about their surgery. We've gotten some great informative posts from Maria C., as well as Jenna Lynn, Mandy, Southern Lady, and Girly Girl 1313, just to name a few. Oh, and we can't forget about Tom Blanchard, who's been carrying the DS torch all by himself on the forms for over a year now. Tom, who's been carrying the DS torch in a nice glass of Merlot. So with their help, here's a quick refresher on the DS. It's not widely known or performed, mostly because it's a more complex and involved surgery than any of the other big four. Big four? Sorry, I should explain that. There are basically four major types of weight loss surgery currently being performed. Bands, pouches, sleeves, and switches. And when it comes to the switch, a lot of the info out there is old and out of date. So a lot of folks don't really give it much consideration when researching surgery. And that could be a big mistake. If you're a pre-op, you should carefully look into each type of surgery. And yeah, I know that a lot of your insurance companies will only cover one type, but you may be surprised to find that even though they say that, it may not really be the case. If you talk to some of our DS friends, you'll find that they were originally denied the surgery only to have it approved on appeal. So, what else did we learn? One of the big things to keep in mind about the DS is that out of the big four, it's the most malabsorptive. That means that following a supplement regimen and having regular labs and bone scans done is even more critical. If you aren't committed to changing your lifestyle and you can't commit to the post-operative requirements, then the DS is not for you. Because it's more malabsorptive, the consequences of non-compliance can be way more drastic. And to be honest, this goes for us R and Wires too. If you can't decide to make the changes for life, then don't even look at a surgery with a malabsorptive element to it. Another common piece of misinformation out there about the DS is that DSers have bad gas and bowel issues. I know a lot of people that have been turned away from the DS because of that myth. Yeah, I said it, myth. Of course there can be some issues. Heck, as an RNY patient, if I even look at sugar-free ice cream, you don't want to be around me at all. You run for the hills. Run, I tell you, get away. <laughs> it's the same with the DSers. Eat a food that doesn't agree with you and you will have some issues. Steer clear of those foods and all's well. So let's cross the stinky DSers myth off the list. How about this one? DSers are gluttons. I've seen this time and time again on other forums. Because the DS diet requires them to eat a high amount of fat, and because they need to eat larger quantities than with other surgeries, they're sometimes unfairly referred to as pigs. Simply not true. 
With the DS, they only absorb about 20% of the calories that they eat from fats. Fat is almost a free food for DSers. With the RNY, we malabsorb fat at first, but after time, fat intake needs to be watched, otherwise it could lead to regain. Not so with the DS. That malabsorption of fat is forever. In fact, really the only thing they absorb 100% is carbs, so that's what they need to watch. All food is not fair game for DSers. They, like the other three surgery types, need to be diligent in what they eat. We all make our choices, then we have to live with them. In short, it all leads back to what we've said over and over. Do your research, freaks. So to help you on your way, our new DS friends have recommended dsfacts.com as a great place to start if you're considering this type of surgery. And if after doing the research you feel the DS is the right surgery for you, then fight for it. Talk to You gotta fight for your right to do a needle switch. Talk to a DSer who has fought and won. We now have more DSers on our forum to talk to, but there's also a lot of DSers on the DS boards at obesityhealth.com, so ask for information there too. Bottom line is this. It's been over seven years since I had my surgery, and I've never once regretted it. Surgery is a big decision. Make sure that you're making the best decision and choice for you, so that you won't have any regrets either. We definitely don't want any of you freaking out. Instead, we want you to freak on. Lovely segue, Tony Tao. Lovely. I didn't write it. She wrote it.